In this second video in our series on flammable solids, we're going to be investigating some of the most common flammable and combustible metals and giving some specific examples of each. So we'll start with probably the most common flammable metals. Uh, and for those, we're going to be looking at magnesium, zirconium, titanium, aluminum, and zinc. And all five of these metals um, would qualify as class D fires when they burn and are most commonly flammable in their most finely divided forms, meaning the most powdery kinds of forms. So we're talking about shavings, we're talking about powders, we're talking about anything that is not um, large bulk samples of any of these. So let's take a look at magnesium first. Now magnesium is a very reactive metal on its own. In fact, when it is one of the few that in its bulk form uh, will ignite in the air um, pretty much uh, without much uh, uh, resistance. Um, when it is raised to its ignition temperature, that ignition temperature is 1153 degrees Fahrenheit, it begins to melt and it burns with this really, really bright white flame. Um, in fact, the 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 brilliance of magnesium fires are well utilized in the fireworks industry uh, to produce the brightness of the light that comes out when those fireworks explode up in the sky. And in particular, the flashbang fireworks, the ones that are the bright white um, with the really loud sound, the magnesium is at the very heart of those. It's one of the reasons why they come off so brightly. Um, moving on, we can look at titanium. Now, titanium is well coveted in the metal uh, in the metal industry because of its uh, strength. Uh, it is all, almost half the mass of steel, but maintains all of the strength and durability. Um, titanium is relatively resistant to corrosive attack, um, mainly because uh, titanium actually forms a very thin layer of titanium titanium oxide. Uh, on its surface, so it reacts um, very uh, easily with the air in a very mild reaction to produce titanium oxide, and that prevents the titanium from acid and base attack, in particular acid attack, um, because the acid is unable to penetrate that titanium oxide coating easily. However, when it is in its finely divided form, that is its powdered form, um, it is pyrophoric um, and it will pose a very serious fire, a very serious explosive risk. Um, and the main reason for that is when these metals burn, they produce a ton of energy almost instantaneously. Um, zirconium. Uh, zirconium is not as well known to uh, the common person, um, but in uh, the nuclear and steel industries, it is quite common to find. And the primary risk with using zirconium is that its auto ignition temperature is on the lower side, 700 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, and so, remembering what we know about auto ignition temperature, 700 Fahrenheit is the temperature that would be required to get the zirconium to ignite without any outside interaction, any outside force. No flames, no uh, sparks, nothing. So one of the issues with zirconium is that it is a pretty considerable fire and explosive risk um, if temperatures do get a little bit out of control. Now, probably the most common that uh, metal that we run into um, for this kind of, uh, of uh, hazard is metallic aluminum. Metallic aluminum is um, relatively useful. Um, it's relatively corrosive resistant because like titanium, it forms an oxide coating. Um, but unlike titanium, uh, the oxide coating is not as uh, durable uh, to acid attack or even base attack as, as uh, the titanium oxide is. Uh, aluminum oxide can be penetrated with just some mild heating um, it also can be penetrated uh, just given enough time. Um, and so aluminum is very susceptible to corrosive attack from acids and bases. 
Uh, the other thing that is well known about aluminum is that its dust and powder are pyrophoric materials. And no reaction illustrates this more than what is called the thermite reaction. Um, and so on this next slide, we're going to show the thermite reaction here. And so the setup for the thermite is pretty simple. Uh, what you have in the thermite reaction is you've got some kind of cone or apparatus. Sometimes um, terracotta pots are used for this. Sometimes it's uh, reaction cones, um, um, filter paper, how, however you want to do it. Inside the reaction mixture, you have thermite, uh, which is a mixture of aluminum powder and aluminum ox or excuse me, um, aluminum powder and iron three oxide. Iron three oxide you would know better as rust. Um, and so you take these two powders, you mix them together. That's what is known as the thermite mixture. And we use a piece of magnesium here, kind of acts like a wick um, on a candle. Um, to allow some heat to come into the reaction mixture. And once the reaction mixture starts, you get a violent reaction takes place here. And this violent reaction ultimately um, causes the pot or whatever it is to break and pure iron um, comes out the bottom and lands in the pan of dry sand here. It's a really, really awesome reaction to watch. And we're going to show it to you here in just one second. So here's a video of another person doing the thermite reaction. I'll link to the video in, uh, in the description so that you can watch it and get the full sound for yourself. Uh, our audio is actually going to be muted here. Um, and I'm just going to kind of talk over it as it happens. So here's the reaction that's taking place. And if you're looking for um, good reactions, good good things to kind of watch for on YouTube. Um, this is a really good example of a good series of videos. So here you see this is them making the, the thermite material. So iron three oxide rust is being combined with aluminum powder in this beaker. They're mixing it around so that's all uniform. And they're pouring it into this terracotta pot. Um, and then they're going to add here, you'll see them folding up a large piece of magnesium. Um, this piece of magnesium is going to be acting kind of like a fuse or, or a wick on a candle and just kind of, um, giving a plate, us a place to ignite this. Uh, without actually igniting, trying to ignite the powder itself. So um, igniting the magnesium is going to provide some energy, which is going to allow the thermite to go. And so now you can see he's lighting it. We get that bright white light there from the magnesium, which is what we would expect. And now it's making its way into the thermite mixture. and wait for it there it goes so the reaction goes and and happens really really quickly they're going to show it again here in slow motion um that's the iron um the purified iron that is there afterwards it's still kind of molten um they're going to show this here in in slow motion and watch the bottom of the pot after this first initial break you're going to see three large lumps fall out of the bottom and into the sand. There they are. And so that's how they end up getting um, the molten iron and that's the thermite reaction. All right, let's look at some other examples. So zinc, another really common substance. Um, zinc is often used to uh, coat iron and steel and help protect it from corrosion. Uh, when this happens, we call that galvanized steel. Um, 
Uh, galvanized steel was really popular uh, once upon a time. It's become less popular as an option for uh, plumbing. Um, but it's still around in some places. Um, zinc and copper are often used to make brass, um, and they're combined in a certain combination to make the metallic alloy brass. Zinc is often found in dry cell batteries as well, and its dust and powder, like we've seen in other cases, are pyrophoric. And so, this concludes for us our look at metallic um, uh, substances that are flammable. In our third video, we will start to look at another class of materials called um, ionic hydrides and carbides, and then we'll transition to talking a little bit about nonmetals and nonmetallic substances. Have a good day.